Hi, this is Gail and welcome to my channel. Today I thought I would share with you some more of the 3 and 15 Don't Freak Out Before Christmas challenges um, from D.D. Farago. And this one today is, yes, you guessed it, little snippets or clusters. Now, I postponed doing this because I really didn't have any fabric, I thought. But when I started rooting through things, I found that it really didn't take much more than a small strip of fabric to be able to do these. And I went through some pieces of fabric I had saved to make journal covers and found I could snip off a little bit from one side and get enough to be able to make these little clusters. Now, I know you've probably all seen it done before, so I'm only going to show you how I make one of them. Now, I know there are a lot of different ways to do it. Some people will use double-sided tape. Some just glue things together. Some sew them with their sewing machine. Others use staples. So what I'm doing actually is good old hand sewing through all of the layers and then gluing things down if they need to be. So these are for a woodland or a fall journal. I have both that I am uh, working on. So let me just show you what I've done so far, and then I'll quickly go through and show you one. Now, also today, I am going to show you how to make Eve Spade's suspended specimen pockets, tags, etc. Now, this is my take on it, which is a little different from what she does. But I will show you these and how to make them um, after I get done sharing about the snippets. So you get a two for today. Woohoo! Okay, so let's take a look. So this one has a little bit of bling. Added some of these little blingy things. We've got some of that nice little shiny trim. Got a little bit of cheesecloth, tiny little checkered fabric, very country. And I used to decorate my little farmhouse with a lot of country. And then some colored cheesecloth. And then this fabric. So, all of that just, oopsie, sewn together at the back. Nothing fancy. Okay, moving right along, you can see this one, some lace, little fall color there. I did receive a couple of, uh, people gave me some fabric as well, so there you have it. That's a little wooden piece, and I did end up having to punch holes in it so I could sew it on like a button. I didn't think it would hold being just glued on. Oh, this is an old button here. Okay, some more of that heavy-duty crocheted lace. This is like felt, it fe or flannel, rather, a little flannel piece. Okay, so just showing you the layers. But you get the final effect, an old piece I cut off of. Uh, kind of looked like a flower, so I put it at the top cut off of something. These are some little silk flower type leaves and a little button there. And so you get the picture. This is a piece of fabric. It was a fabric sample. You know, if you contact some of the upholstery places, they'll send you samples and so I did have some of those that work, so I cut them out. This is a piece of old feed sack that Lori gave me. I mean, this is a leftover piece of fabric for making masks for my family. This piece actually came off of a piece of fall fabric that I did purchase, and I've been cutting out the leaves and 
acorns and all kinds of good things. Button that came off of something, and I thought, mm, snag it, it goes. So, again, you can see those are the layers. Cheese, cloth. Okay, th nothing, this is not rocket science, obviously. This is some more of that burlap paper, which gives it a little sustenance, a little substance, a little support. You see, here are the layers. These, these flowers, gosh, I've been cutting those, and I must have had a 100 of those, but I'm getting down to the last 30. And then, of course, these little silk flowers that already came with the gold around them and the little bobbles. So, hey, it works. More buttons, another little leaf, an acorn. You know, just little tiny scraps. But it works. Just showing you those, just so you get an idea of all that it takes. Now, this piece... Again, this is for a cover that I'm going to be making. It's a spring cover, I believe. Some cheesecloth. And uh, this was gifted by Lori. Now, this also is for a cover. So, it came, it had like strips um, that you could cut. And I cut off one strip to use for this cute little dragonfly. So, I do have a journal eventually down the road planned for that little button that's got a little bling bling okay here's another one of these just put a little button there for the dragonfly head as you can see lots of layers of goodness and back here this is just I'll show you it's just a piece I've cut off from an old doily or tray cover and yep there you go so, super easy piece of cake. So, let me just take something I've put aside and show you what I'm going to do. I had this little bauble hanging out on my desk. So, I thought, add a few beads to it that match the little bedangle. Throw a little safety pin on it so it kind of looks like the dragonfly body. And, voila, there you have it. Then, um... Here, I just thought it needed just a little something-something, and we're not going to see that little dragonfly or anyhow. So I thought I'd put this up here. But then I found this. This is really vintage. Like, I know I've had it at least 20 years, if not longer, and I'm down to just a couple of little pieces. And I thought, hmm, I like those colors with this, so... Maybe I'll put that on there, too. And then, well, I have this, which looks like a flower. I'll put that at the back. And then, well, let's put this up here so we kind of have a little complete picture. Okay, this is way overthinking these. Really, you could just slap pieces together um, and... So, you know, I, I tend to overthink some of this stuff. So, I'm just going to start at the back and work my way forward. going to hide that knot, even though this is going to be, you know, like, put down. Whoa, looky there, I lost a piece. This is going to be, um, oopsie. Ah, oh, there we go. Am I doing well or what? Um, <laughs> it's going to be glued or sewn to a page as a little embellishment. So, doesn't really matter. Um, nobody's going to see that back but you, really. So... Okie dokie. And up under the safety pin would be nice. Let's see if I can get it together this time. Okay, and uh can't even pick up the needle this morning. My fingers aren't awake yet, apparently. I want to make sure I'm 
catching that fabric. So I'm kind of going in there a little bit more and sewing more than I totally need to. I mean, I'm serious. This is not necessary. Not necessary to make this so, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm way overthinking it. I think I might actually cut that um, turquoise piece there or aqua piece because I feel like it is actually, eh, that is, eh, where's my thimble when I need it, huh? I feel like that's just a little bit too long, and I am going to trim it just a hair, because I don't want it to mess up. Being able to see that adorable dragonfly. You know how it is. You go on to film... And you have all kinds of technical difficulties, right? Things just don't seem to work out. So, I am just going to cut this off, tie it off, and call it good. Because really, none of this matters. It's not going to show. Okay, so, okay, there we go, good enough, still a little flimsy, I don't know, yeah, I think I'm gonna take a little stitch more, this is how not to do it, yeah, Shouldn't it be, whoa, there goes the thread on the floor. Lord knows my cat will take that and go all over with it. He scared me to death yesterday. I was sitting here in the chair watching a video and doing some fussy cutting, and oh my goodness, all of a sudden I get pounced on by him scared me to death. I did not know he was by my side. And when he pounced, oh my goodness, startled me and him. But he hung on. So, he gets his name Diablo rightfully. Let me tell you, he was indeed a little Diablo when he was younger. He's much better now than he was when he was younger, but oh my word, just a crack up. Loves to get me, and he loves to attack, sneak attack. When I'm leaving my den, he loves to hide under the chair, and as I step up from the den into the kitchen area, he just all of a sudden swats at my legs. And when I say swat, this cat is not gentle. He, like, should be a boxer. You can hear him. It's that hard that you hear when he swats. It's like craziness. So, but we love him. We saw, we, uh, he was a, a, a rescue and a friend of mine. Rescued a whole batch of them, and then finally convinced me. Which, it doesn't take much convincing. I love animals. Um, and especially if it's an animal that, like a cat, that, you know, when you leave, will stay home. You don't have to take them to the kennel. You can have someone come in and take care of them. But since my son lives with me anyhow, he's usually here if I take off and go somewhere, so it's all good, and he and Diablo have 
a wonderful relationship. They like to roughhouse, so. Okay, this is really ridiculous what I'm doing here, and it's sloppy. So don't do as I do. Do as I say, right? Honestly, it doesn't matter. It's not going to show, but. Okay, I just feel better about that because it was just so flimsy and floppy and just not doing what I wanted it to. Okie dokie. So there we have it, sort of. <laughs> How can something become so complicated, huh? Okay, there we go. So, snippets out of the way. Let's hope I do better with the next segment. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at these. These are by Eve Hunter Spade, and I will put her channel link below. Hers were a little bit different than mine, um, but I got the idea and I was inspired by her. So I definitely want you to check her out. Love everything she does. She's an awesome photographer. Very creative. Okay, so this is obviously made out of a book page. And I also did some stenciling and distressing. A um, little mushroom here. And here, so notice it's double-sided. Um, and then I just added this little mushroom I have glossy accented. But I can tell you, oh, there's a story there, too. Be careful when you put them away in your ephemera folder. My ephemera folder must have gotten warm. And, uh-huh, yeah, I have a gloppy mess of glossy accented things. Should have remembered to put a little bit of cornstarch. Uh, or baby powder over it. So I'm going to try using my heat gun and just heating them up a little bit and seeing if I can pull them apart that way because there's just such luscious goodness in here. I hate that that happened. But can I say that's typical for me? Okay, so added a label, a little word, cute, see little girl sitting on the mushroom. And then over here again, some more stenciling, distressing. Another cute little girl who has a piece of lace stuck to her. Another glossy accent and mushroom and a label. Okay. Now, it also has a little pocket. And um, I have used a woodland, uh, yeah, printable from Dots Inspiration. And I will put their link below as well. And I just did uh, double-sided printing on it. You certainly can write over that and use it as a journaling card. So that fits right in there. Now, obviously, it has to be a pretty narrow tag because you don't have a lot of space here. Um, and so this little flap is the flap that will fit over the page. So, let's say this is your spine and the pages, it will fit this way. So, this will be here, it will be sewn in to the center of the spine. You flip through some pages, yada yada, and then here will be the next page, so which is double sided. So, my thoughts are you could even do a really long page and have two of these hooked together, or you could actually glue these together and have a double sided so that, you know, you have uh, one of these in the front and then this in the back. So, I mean, hooked together like a page. So it's all possible, and if and when I do that, I will share with you and show you what I've done. Okay, so then this one, these are all die cuts. I have the Tim Holtz leaf die cut. Notice I just use a little cheesecloth. Um, these have been glossy accented. Didn't do any stenciling. I just distressed on this one. And on this one, I used some of the words from Nikki Adigan of Musings by Nikki. Okay, and I'm going to slaughter this. It's Greek. So, Scytherism is what I'm guessing. 
the sound of leaves rustling in the wind, okay? And this paper was already this color. I did nothing to it. It was highly textured, and this copper color, it was gorgeous. Okay, and again, here's another little tag. And it's double-sided and printed. So, alrighty, enough. Let me show you how I did it. So, first of all, you start off, if you want to use the book pages, which is a great thing to do, you start off with the book page. Now, it doesn't really matter how big it is. It just depends on what size pocket you want. Because basically, you're going to leave about an inch here and then fold the rest in half, leaving just a little smidge uh, so that when this is folded, this part of the pocket isn't going to catch, okay? Now, let me see here. This is about an 8-inch tall uh, page and about 5 and a half wide, okay? So, that's what I use. Doesn't mean that's what you have to use. Go for it. Do your own thing. Now, I would use my scoreboard. This actually isn't a scoreboard. Well, it is a scoreboard. It's an all-in-one, and I love this. For traveling, it is so great. So, if I were going to do this, okay... I'll uh, put it in here, go to the one inch mark, and find my tool, which right now is eluding me, although it was here just a few minutes ago. So, what can you use instead? Well, that's a good question. So... I just happen to have this little tool here, so I'm going to use that. I don't want it sharp. I just want to give it a, a little bit of a fold, and it's not really doing what I want it to do because it's. I'm afraid to push it too much, and then that's going to fold, okay? So about an inch. I used an inch. You can use more, you can use less. The main thing is you have to leave enough so that when you are sewing this into your binding, you have enough coming up so that it's catching the whole pocket, okay? And then what I would do is fold it over, leaving just, I don't know, not even, maybe an eighth of an inch there, like so. Okay, and you can use your bone folder to uh, make sure that's good and folded. And again, see, this will flip up. You don't have any kind of an issue. It opens and closes easily with that there. And, of course, you can cut this off, even it up a little bit. Then I would go in with, but you don't have to use this. You can just use something that has a little half circle. Now, if you want to be exact, yes, just nip it just a little bit there so you know where the halfway mark is. Go in, and then you want to make just a little bit of a thumb hole area. Now, if, the, however, you want to make sure you can get that tag out both ways easily, you can go right through all layers, okay? Now I have two pieces of paper here. Didn't need to, but now I have possibility of two pockets. So, there's that. Let me put that away. Okay, now, so, voila. Done with the scoreboard. Do you have to even use the scoreboard? No. Just showing you what I did. Okay, so, we have those. They're all ready to roll. Now, I did take this now, and let me show you. All I do next is, before I do any gluing, I want to 
distress. Well, it's easy to distress. And I am using today brushed corduroy. It's a little bit lighter than um, vintage photo. And I also had my, um, oh, my permanent ink uh, that's uh, sepia colored that I really like to use, but it's about dried up. So I'm going to have to get a re-inker or buy a new pad. So, and I just placed an order to Amazon and I was like, I know there's something else I need. And lo and behold, that's what it was. Now, since these are double-sided, so to speak, I am distressing all the way around. This is just a great way to use up book pages and upcycle. Don't have to use this. And in fact, I do have another one cut out. So I can show you using, um, yeah, other paper. That's what I'm trying to say. Scrapbook paper. How about that? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. So, got that done. Now, next thing that I do is decide what do I want here? What shape? Now, if you don't have die cuts, you can take the edge of this if you want a square one and just draw around it and cut it out um, for that size window. Um, circles, I do that all the time. I find whatever I have that's got a circular bottom and use that. I would like to use this one. Now again, if you want it to be exactly in the center, just fold it in half and a little crease there. It's not going to show because, oh yeah, you're cutting it out. Okay, now obviously I'm only going to go halfway because that's all the more I need. And again, we're junk journaling. This doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, and by the way, save these. This will make a really cool little embellishment especially if you make clusters. So, don't get rid of it. All right, so now, next thing. I want to put in my acetate. Okay, now, you can use all kinds of things. As a retired teacher, I have tons of those overhead transparencies. Those are a little bit thick, though, and I want this to be suspended in it halfway. Now that's the difference between what I'm doing and what Eve did. Eve basically glued hers on top of the acetate. I'm going to suspend it halfway in. I just felt like if I grab that, that's going to be a little more secure if it's glued part way in. And I think the effect is the same. But rather than use overhead transparencies, which are a little thicker, I'm going to use, yes, this is just packaging. So let me show you. It's like this stuff. Okay? That's all it is. But it's lightweight, and that's the part that I like. I'm really struggling with having, you know, chunky monkeys, so I'm looking at ways to uh, downsize things that I create for my journal. And so I felt like that was a way to do it. Now again, this is not rocket science. It does not have to be perfect. I am just cutting out a piece that is um, a bit bigger, but big enough so that I don't have to worry about it being too small and oh, not working, right? Okay, so I have, it's really two pieces here, but it actually, this piece is, uh, yeah, uh, already, it's really been folded, so it's double-sided. What I'm going to do is, on the inside, not on the outside, but I'm showing you on the outside, 
I am going to, first of all, suspend the piece that I want in here. Now, what do I want in here? I can put all kinds of things in there. What should I put in there? Well, hmm. Let me see. I have got all kinds of lovely things. But what I was thinking is, let me show you my ephemera folder. Okay, it's down here. And don't look too closely because it's jam-packed. I'm still working on moving some things over to a bigger ephemera folder. Lori from Grammy's Keepsakes made me this, and I can tell you everything she makes is quality. It lasts forever. It's going to be fine no matter what I do to it. And I can tell you, I really stretch things to the limit. The word chunky monkey was invented for me, I swear. So, now, things that I could put in it. I have lots, don't I? Oh, I have so many things in here. But, what I really thought that I would like to do is, and I think I'm getting there, warmer. Yay, here we go. I really do like these leaves. But that one's a little bit big, isn't it? This one would be more the size. Or what else do I have? Do I have any of the little maple leaves? Let's see. Looking through here. Oh, goodness gracious. Here we go. And I have that. So, let me see which one I want to use, okay? Let me put this back. And, okay, so, if the window was here, we know I can use this one that it fits. And we suspend it about halfway. Like that. How about you? Whoopsie. Okay, like that one. Or do I want a change of pace? I think I want to change of pace and I want to use that one. Because I've used one of these already. So, here's what I'm going to do next. I am going to put some glue. And I am using the Barely Art glue. Love it. It gives me a little longer time than Art Glitter glue to be able to move things around. Now, I don't want to use tons. I just want to put it around the edges just a little bit. And I say that with tongue in cheek because for me to be able to get just a little bit, it's not very easy. Now I am going to put it on both sides. Probably doesn't really need it because if it's already glued down on the one, we're probably good to go. But just to be safe, okay, and I'm going to take some of that off because that's just... A lot of glow. Now, I want to slide it, make sure I'm not having glue on my fingers. I'm going to slide it in this little pocket. I'm going to leave this little pocket right over here. And I want it to hang out halfway, right? So, here we go. I'm going to glue that down. Give it a few minutes to adhere. Now, you can totally do it the way Eve did it and put this on top. You know, there's no problem with doing that. 
I just felt like for me, I know how I pull things and oh yeah, they fall apart. I just felt like it was more secure if it was inside the paper, okay? And the neat thing about these is I don't have to cut two of them, which I will explain about that when I do the next one of these. Okay, so basically we're good to go. So now what I need to do is to glue this in here. Okay, want to make sure I have it lined up where I want it. Right there is good. Okay, careful not to put too much glue. And I say that for me, not for you, because, yeah, mm-hmm, I'm a glueaholic. Okay. Now let's make sure I've got everything right to the edge the way I want it. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now notice I'm just gluing in one side for now. And I don't want the glue all over, but I do want it to the edge because if I'm going to use this as a pocket, I don't want this catching my tag every time I go to put it in. Now I am going to glue this so this is down and you can't get in between the two layers of the book page. I'm going to do that closer to this edge because I do want to be able to use this as a pocket. Now, if you aren't going to use it as a pocket, then by all means, glue all over, okay? But I do want to use this as a pocket, okay? And I'm just going to leave that there. Give it a few minutes to adhere. Now, you could use any kind of shape here. You can cut out a semicircle, a rectangular, a rectangle, a square, uh, really fancy. If you have some more die cuts, you can cut some really fancy things, okay? I almost thought this was too fancy for a Woodlands journal. So, see, what do I know? Okay, so there we have it. And you see, oops, why well you don't see. Uh, better put a little more glue for some reason. There, put a little more glue in there. Okay, uh, there, I was afraid of that. It used, get back in there, go away. Okie dokie. So typical of me. Like I said, glueaholic. What can I say? Overkill with the glue. Oh yeah, now I'm oozing it that way. What is wrong with me? Again, do as I say, not as I do. And you'll have a very successful project. I was kidding someone and said I should be called the crappy crafter, huh? Anyhow, yeah. It'll dry clear. It doesn't really matter, but I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so that's driving me nuts. Okay, so we have that. Now, I want to glue the bottom, because it is a pocket. I'm trying to just use a little, and then I want to glue this edge. Okay, trying to be careful not to ooze it out so that this flap gets caught and gets glued. Don't want that. Okay, easy peasy. Okay, now you may wonder what size should I use for a tag? Again, it depends upon your book page size. Sorry for reaching over you. So let me just show you how this works just fine. 
it goes in. It does, really, it does. I've just glued it, so I'm being really cautious because I don't want it to catch. And um, it would appear that I got some glue somewhere I didn't want it. And since I don't have my... There we go. I knew it would work. See? So, it goes in, no problem. Now, this is... Let's check the size. This is a one and a half wide by three and a half tall to this point, but all the way to the end, it's about four. So one and a half wide by four inches tall, roughly, is the size that I use for this, okay? And you see, it works perfectly. It goes right in. Okay? I'm really embarrassed. That looks bad. It's driving me nuts. So, I'm going to have to take care of that. But anyhow, so, you get the idea, right? So, that's how you do the suspension. So, let me show you using, and then you just decorate it. That's all there is to it. Okay? But, now, let me show you using a piece of scrap paper. This is from Hackney and Company. It's so cute. The little woodland. And then there's the other side. So totally usable in a woodland journal, right? Okay. So really bugging me about where my I don't know where that went. It was truly was right here. But I don't see it on the floor. And I don't see it here, but this is typically me. Okay, just so you know, I did go ahead, cut this out, and distress it to save time. Okay? I decided to put the notch through both sides because I want to be able to grab it out pretty quickly. And I thought, might be nice to see it done this way. Being right-handed, doing it with a little flap on the left side, felt more natural for me. But I thought, hey, you know, if you're left-handed, it might feel more natural to do it the other way. So let's give that a whirl, okay? So the other thing you can do is just use a ruler and come over here and uh, fold that up. Um, and yeah, there we go. But again, I'm looking for something to use. This pencil barely has a lead in it. Oh, but of course it's going to work and we're going to see it today. Yeah, that's pretty typical of me. So anyhow, I'm going to fold it, and of course it's a little bit crooked, because, yeah, wouldn't be me if it wasn't crooked. Okay, there we go. Not a biggie, and I'm going to erase that because that bugs me. Yeah, mm -hmm. Any other time when I go to find a pencil, the lead is broken, doesn't work, yada, yada. Anyhow, no biggie. Again, this is going to be in the spine. You're not going to see it anyhow. But, okay, so, again, we need to put in a little bit of a window. I'm just gonna, again, you can measure. I'm just not a measure type person. Okay, so I have my little mark there. I know where halfway is. It's lining that up with the center of this. And then, boom. There goes that cutesy little fox. But never fear. We got him here on this little piece. Which, again, I am saving. Okay. 
We're done with this, hopefully. Okie dokie. So, let's again get a piece of this paper. This wonderful little stuff. It's just good stuff. Okay. So, again, I don't want, like, tons of it hanging out. So, and again, I'm just, you know, I'm not measuring, but I'm leaving enough room so that I don't have to worry about, oops, I went too far, and uh-oh, now it's not going to cover up the opening the way I wanted it to. Okay, so. Here we have it. Here is our piece. And this time I have this little piece, so nothing's going to be able to get in there. But I just did notice that that was an uneven piece. And now I'm wondering is that going to fit my opening easily enough? Yes, that will fit. No problem. Okay. Now, I'm going to use the open side, and this time what I have are these two little foxes, okay? I've already distressed them, but they need to be glued together so that they appear to be double-sided, okay? Now, you should know that this image was not a reversed image until I went in and used paint to reverse it. Now, the printable came in a PDF format, and with PDF in my printer, I can't just reverse the image. I have to take it into another program. So, I uh, clicked on my image that I wanted, and use the open with option and I opened with paint there is a paint 3d and that but I um, haven't played with that enough yet and it's a little bit different and I just wanted to do this quickly so I just used paint and I went in and I did a flip, flip horizontally, I think is what I used, which gave me the reversed image, and then I printed that off, and voila, then I could make this appear to be a double-sided little fox, right? Okay, I guess, even though I've already distressed it, I'm going to do it again because it's really hard when you're cutting to make things perfect and I don't want there to be any white edges on my little fox so and I could see that there would have been had I not done this so and I'm gonna go do both sides it's a little flimsy right now but that's okay and again this is from my woodland journal but I do have woodland and fall that I'm uh, starting to create for so okay so here's my little fox here's the opening and the acetate and I want him to be about halfway so and I want to center him so there we have it so I'm going to leave him right there Pull that back and just do. Now you will notice, oh yeah, that is just so typical of me, isn't it? Well, that's okay. That lets me put it on by hand and maybe that's the best thing. Um, I don't worry about going back in and closing up the edge that's open on this acetate because truly it doesn't matter because 
it's going to be stuck together because of the glue on this. So why bother, right? <laughs> and do you see what I just did? If it can be done, I'm going to do it. The crappy crafter, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm getting him on this side glued in. And again, that's going to dry clear anyhow. It doesn't matter. And now I'm going to glue him on this side real quickly. This one ear looks like it got cut off, but that's the way it is. It's not, I didn't cut him off. He just is that way. And I kind of like the idea of smoothing that out a little bit. Less likely to ooze, I'm thinking, doing that. Right? I say less likely, but not impossible. <laughs> if it can be done, I will do it. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I am not going to worry about that little piece that's open. It's really not noticeable. Nobody's going to know. And this is adhered in it, so it's not going to come apart anyhow. Okay, so now we just have to come over here and glue him in. Is he adorable or what? Now, I probably could have used, as you see, a bigger window. Because I'm not happy that part of his little leg is cut off. Um, it'll either be that or part of his ear, it would appear. I could, I probably should have pushed him out a little bit more. Is that a big deal? Not really. Nobody cares. Nobody Okay, only you and I know, right? Shh, don't tell anybody. It's all good. Uh-oh. And I just slid with it. I felt it. So, there. Moved it again. What is up with me? Some days, I just don't know. Sorry, I got my head in there. Okay, so, and now, I want this part. Okay. Yeah, if I'd have pulled him out just a little bit more, his little leg wouldn't be cut off. But again, is that a big deal? I don't think so. I really don't. Now, I have leftover. This is a 12 by 12 sheet. So, let's see what I have here. And I can cut a piece go alrighty so I want it to be four tall and one and a half wide right isn't that what we said okay but what I'm going to do because I have it and it's quicker is <laughs> I'm going to use this and just use that as my template so I can get this done quickly and try not to cut this tag. Now I'm going to switch to my smaller 
fussy cut scissors because, yeah, just easier. Yeah, come over here. I'm gonna cut this off. Yeah, sure, I am. Okay. All right. So. I'm trying not to cut this, and this has come up, and that's why I'm struggling, as you can see. I don't know. Why do things always seem so complicated for me? <laughs> I'm telling you. It's because there's that bumpy there that's making issues. Okay, so there you have it. Put this back. Boom. There we have the tag. Now, I am going to distress it. Both sides. And... Let's see what I can put on this one. Okay. I have this. And, wow, that's about perfect, isn't it? So, there we go. And, um, yeah. Let's uh, do like that, and I think that is good enough. I really like this. It's so cute. So, and I'm looking to see, whoops, there goes my phone. Looking to see if I have any brads here handy on my desk and generally I do but I'm not seeing one right now So, I think that I will get one out real quickly. So, give me a minute to find them. And I will be all right. thought I had everything out, but yeah, you know how that is. Okay, here they are. Oh, gracious sakes. Okay, what do I have in here that might work? Eh. I don't think I want flowers. 
Lots of flowers. <laughs> well, that'll wake you up. Hmm. It's green. Let's see. And ignore that phone ringing. That's my sister calling. So, you know, I think I'm good with one of these. Which one do I like better? That one or that one? I think I like that one. So, And I am just going to use this. I don't. Yes, do it right, Gail. I do have my crocodile here. Use the tiniest hole. Boom. Okay. Now, I do think that I want this on the back. So, yeah, I don't really think it matters which way it goes. So, there we go, poke it through, poke it through. Okay, and then I'm going to put the bread down, the wings, and there we have cutesy little pull. All right, so then we can test if it works, right? So let's go through now and put our glue on. So again, putting it on the bottom and here on the side not too far in and not too much. Okay. There we go. Now we have our pocket. Okay. Making sure we don't glue that little flap shut. Okay, so let's see how this does. Oh, that's cute. I like it. I like it. Okay. There. And I'm okay with the bread showing here. And I'm okay with it stopping the tag from going all the way down. Right? Okay. So, now what I want to do is just decorate it a hair. Right? Okay. So, I found this cork. I went ahead and it's, it's a strip of cork, dollar store, and I'm going to glue that down, and I think I'll put the glue on this, it'll make it a little bit easier, I believe. It's cork, so I'm not sure how well this is going to stick, um, but it's not stiff at all, so I feel like this should work. I just don't know how porous it is and if it's going to soak all the glue up, right? It almost feels like a canvas on the back of it here. Okay, so I just thought I'd make it wrap all the way around, right? So just lining it up with the bottom. It does seem like there's some oozing through. That's interesting. So it is quite porous then. Okay. Yes, and by the way, if you use our glitter glue, at least here in our state of Michigan, 
we've gone below freezing so they won't ship if the weather is freezing because the glue will freeze and be ineffective but barely art does ship in the winter supposedly it does not affect the glow so just saying something good to know and it does give you a little bit more time to move things around personally that's what i have found i don't know maybe everybody won't feel that that's true but okay so i thought it would be nice to have a little something something underneath the little saying that i put down here not a lot of decoration because i think the paper carries it truthfully Okay, and this is one of those little word tags from Nikki. Waldeinsamkeit. That is German, so I slaughtered that, I know, I'm sorry. The feeling experienced when alone in the woods connecting with nature. That's a great word, and it is quite an experience, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to use my glue here on this fabric. going to place that roughly centrally on this piece and again roughly okay this has already been distressed to save some time because it seems like this is going kind of long of course I have cloth dragging across yeah that's me again the crappy crafter fits <laughs> okay and that's cloth and all of that it's going to take a few for it to adhere and again remember it's cork so it's also pretty absorbent so I just won't mess with that too much. Now I'm going to come over here, do the same thing, get rid of that goober that's on there from the cloth. Okay. This is just a little, you know, little, little piece of cloth that I used in the snippets so yeah okay and again this is one of those words this is a different one okay and this is Old English wear a festeria it's a verb to wander longingly through the forest in search of a mystery Woohoo! That is true. The woods can be very mysterious. They can be spooky. When we lived on our farm in Vassar, when you want to talk spooky, we actually had a Bigfoot hunter come to our house. Left his card, uh, talked with um, us, and they believed there was Bigfoot action where we lived which is a little spooky to think about but there was something that we would see from time to time in the back portion of our little 20 acres whether it was a bear and it just never came close enough for us to see it we know it stunk really badly because we could smell it if we were close enough bigfoot i don't know i'm not gonna say i don't believe i'm not gonna say i do believe but anyhow, I wished I would have kept that card now because that's been, gosh, probably in the 80s or 90s when the guy stopped. So just thought that was kind of kind of funny and kind of cool. Okay, well, there you have it. Now, I could, I have these little rub-ons, and I could throw a rub-on on, but I think I'm going to pass. I think I kind of like it just like this and there's our little fox suspended he doesn't look as suspended because he's partially hanging on inside so something to keep in mind I should have used a bigger 
a bigger opening there and next time I will you know but I think those are pretty doggone cute and this time it will come from this edge of the page so that's kind of cool alrighty so there you have my take on Eve Spade's suspended specimen tag pockets okay alrighty well thank you so much for stopping by if you are of a mind to I would love it if you have not subscribed if you would subscribe subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you can get notified every time I do a new video now I've been challenged by Susie from Susie's craft room and Lori from Grammy's keepsakes to get to a thousand and we set the deadline of November 7th well I'm only like at this moment about 710 that's like 290 away I'm not feeling the love I'm not feeling it I'm kind of not very optimistic but I will say I really do appreciate my subbies and I especially appreciate those of you who are new and have signed on I hope I won't disappoint you but I appreciate you and thank you for your support and I just want to say I hope that this has inspired you to go out and make something go create something all right alrighty then bye bye have a great day